Jesus told the disciples, guys, listen, I know you're sad right now. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit that's with you is gonna be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. That's what he told them. And the reality of who God is as my father can never be accomplished. Abba, father, can never be accomplished except that the cross would be made real to you. Abba, father, daddy God, can never be accomplished unless the cross becomes real to you. Sin will always be an issue if the cross hasn't become real to you. Sin will always be an issue if the cross doesn't become real to you. Righteousness is the reality. See, I know, I know this. I know that if the love of God hits your heart, sin loses its, loses its voice. If the love of God hits you, which is the chief, the chief of all chiefs, the standard of all standards, to know the love of God that's in Christ Jesus is to be filled with the fullness of God. To know the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. So something happened in Christ to be able to give us the love of God. But I have to know it. To know the love of God. To know, to experience, to gnoso, to, to physically, mentally, spiritually experience the love of God. Is to be filled with his fullness. God created everything. The universe is expanding at the speed of light in every direction, still. God holds it all in the palm of his hand. And he wants to fill you with all of his fullness and it's all according to one thing. The whole Bible, the whole Bible is summed up in the cross. The finished work. So that you can understand why you're on the earth so that you can make yourself ready as the bride for the pickup for a wedding date. But it has, to stop, it has to start with the reality of your chaste virginity before the Father. And in order for that to hit you, this has to be clear of all debris. And there's nothing that takes the debris out except for the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus speaks better things, but the blood of Jesus cleanses your conscience from dead works to serve God. But if your conscience isn't clear, then your conscience is sin-filled. It's a sin consciousness. A lot of the body of Christ sits in a sin consciousness instead of sun conscious. But when you're born again, old things pass away, all things become new. You can't sing, I'll never know how much it costs. You need to sing, I need to know how much it costs. Show me, Lord, how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Why? Because the price that he paid determines your value. So the price that he paid through the life of Jesus determines your value. For you to say you're worthless is to say that Jesus' blood is worthless. It's the truth. I know we don't think about it that way, but that's the truth. If the measuring stick of God's love for you is Jesus, then that means that you are measured according to the price that was paid for you by the Father. And if the Father thought that highly of you, you should think highly of you. But you're not thinking highly of you of something that you've did in your self-righteousness. You're thinking highly of you for what he did when you were yet a sinner. Christ died for you. And if he died for you when you were a sinner, how much more would he freely give you all things? But if all things are added to a consciousness that still thinks sinful, you're twisted and unbalanced. But if all things are added to son consciousness and you're added as a son, you will bow, you will bow lower and lower and lower and grace comes to the humble. But if it's all about living with sin consciousness and getting things, selfishness is there, so the more things you have, the better you feel, which leads to more depression, more anxiety, more worry, and more fear, because now you have more responsibility. But when responsibility lands on sonship, it's easy. Why? Because you can't do it. You're full dependent on him. Okay. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians 1, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom of, and revelation of the insight into the mysteries and secrets and into the deep and intimate knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich his glorious inheritance in the saints. He has an inheritance in you. Is that amazing? 
God has placed an inheritance in you. And even though we have one in him, he's placed one in you. And he only gets glory back when you manifest the inheritance that he's placed in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. But Christ coming out through you is that hope being made manifest in your life. Are you guys okay? Is this too much? So that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. Every day I read it. Why? Because I need this. God wants to give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. He wants to open the eyes of my heart so that I can understand the hope that he's called me to. So that I can understand the hope that he's called me to. Because if I understand the hope that he's called me to, I'll understand the hope that he's called you to. And how can I tell you about a God that's good if I don't even believe it? And if God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, why ain't I thinking like that? Why am I not thinking with the mind that he's given me to think with? Because I keep thinking about the things that God never thinks about, that's why. And my mind is not full of truth, my mind is full of lies. And if my mind is full of lies, how can I give people truth? Then you'll do witnessing out of duty instead of becoming a witness out of love. 